Hello everyone, welcome to D&D News. I am Greg Tito. I am here ready to tell you all the things that are happening both in dungeons, but also dragons. That's going to be the new thing we're happening. It's called Dungeons Also Dragons. I'm changing the name. We're going to get rid of the, No, we're not getting rid of the ampersand. It's too cool. Even people who don't follow Dungeons and Dragons or don't care about that fandom, uh, they just like the ampersand. It's got a lot going on for it. Uh, and uh, now D&D does too. Uh, hi, how are you guys? I just came back from uh, not San Diego. I came from Nashville. Didn't really look at a lot of D&D things that were happening because I was deep in, uh, I want to say, rockabilly music. Not necessarily country. Um, there was a lot of that going on, but it was very entertaining. It is a great city. I don't know if you have ever been. It's the first time I was in Nashville, Tennessee. It's actually not a lot bigger than I thought it was population-wise. I thought it was only going to be, uh, you know, uh, kind of a smaller type area, but it's only uh, a little bit smaller than Seattle as a town, which was surprising to me. Uh, fantastic. I am now getting back into the swing of all things Dungeons & Dragons before leaving again next week to go camping, but we'll talk about that another time. Hi, we had some fun, uh, or at least the Dungeons and Dragons community and Pelham Green and Nathan Stewart had some fun this weekend in San Diego. Um, it was fantastic. We, oh, I thought I tweeted that, and now I'm tweeting it. Um, thank you, Sean. Sean, Shan Majowski just got everything ready to go for us here, and I just was tweeting that he did that, so, all right, you're seeing it now. Uh, yes, we announced uh, all of the fun things from San Diego. Uh, not really all the fun things, but at least one fun thing. And that is this little thing. Uh, Tyranny of Dragons. Do you guys remember how Tyranny of Dragons goes? Uh, it, it is a adventure. It was the first big annual adventure that came out for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition in 2014, which... I don't know if you know this, it was five years ago, almost to the day. Well, actually not to the day. So we have been uh, throwing out a lot of uh, stories and things on social about people uh, when they got into 5th edition, celebrating the five years of 5th edition, uh, and what better way to do that than reissuing a adventure in one tome, one uh, you know uh, area. When this adventure came out, it came out in two volumes. I don't know if you know that. There was... Horde of the Dragon Queen and then Rise of Tiamat came out a little bit later. Uh, we have combined those two adventure books into one. It is called Tyranny of Dragons because that was the name of the storyline. One thing uh, that I did when I got here, because I got here a little bit after that 5th uh, edition came out. So that was in 2015 when I started here. But we had the name of what the storyline was and the name of the book and the adventure. And it was very hard for me as a person writing press releases to be like, no, here's the storyline, and then this is the adventure. And there are two different brain brand names that you need to get associated with. So we've we've streamlined that uh, a, a bit. So Storm King's Thunder, for example, uh, the storyline was called Storm, Storm King's Thunder, and the book was called Storm King's Thunder. That was the first one, because there was Out of the Abyss, if you remember, the adventure was called Out of the Abyss, but the storyline was called Rage of Demons. That was true also for Tyranny of Dragons. It was Tyranny of Dragons was a storyline, and then there was the two adventure books that came out with it. Uh, this is now all combined into one, Tyranny of Dragons. It's coming at you. It's amazing. I don't have a thing to actually show you, uh, an actual physical product, um, but this cover is fantabulous. It is only going to be available in or through game stores, uh, and there's the release date right there, October 22nd. This cover, of course, uh, is in the same vein as the alternate covers that we've been doing with Hydro 74. Uh, he, in fact, did this cover, and it looks fantabulous. A um, couple of uh, things to go uh, as Coolness 53 says, Hi, Coolness 53. Uh, Good-looking cover. Uh, again, you can only get it through game stores. You can't get it anywhere else. But there is a little bit of changes to the content in the book. Most of it is formatting changes. So uh, it was two volumes, now it is one. So we don't have to do two tables of contents and two indices and, and appendices. So all the appendices and things have been kind of compressed into one. Um, we did take into account some uh, comments and player feedback from the first few ed uh, encounters in the first adventure, uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen, that has been uh, you know, making it a little bit more accessible for new players jumping, uh, jumping into uh, those, those encounters. 
that's uh, some feedback that's changed there. There's also some really uh, never before seen footage, not footage, images. Footage is for, it's for video. Images, uh, concept art that we've never published anywhere. Um, there's also going to be uh, some some Easter egg type content uh, in those uh, things, which should be really exciting for people. Uh, we've also included things that were only available online. Uh, we had a uh, article or, or a resource uh, that went along with the adventure when it came out uh, for the first time back in 2014 uh, with magic items and things like that. We've integrated all that into uh, the appendices as well as through the adventure itself. Uh, so a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more easy to, to parse uh, everything in the one place. So if you jumped and didn't... Um, you know, get into 5th edition right when it came out in 2014. Many of you, I know, have only gotten into it the last few years. This is the perfect way to go back and revisit uh, and uh, celebrate the five-year anniversary. And we can't wait to hear all of your stories about what it's like to play through Tyranny of Dragons. Um, I think, you know, if you want to just tell stories about what it's like as you're getting up to it, uh, we can use the, the hashtag that we've been pro uh, profligating out there uh, is five years of 5E. Uh, and tell your story to let us know what it was like, how you got into it, what the five years have been like, uh, what you uh, remember about leading up to it. We, uh, maybe you were a play tester in D&D Next and then you got to see the finished product as it came out. Um, yeah, let us know your stories, talk about them, uh, and we will be promoting more and more of those here on D&D News as we get closer to the release of Tyranny of Dragons. Again, Tyranny of Dragons coming out October 22nd, 2019. Hoonala. That's going to be fun. Uh, there is also, uh, you know, just so that make sure everyone knows all of the Descent uh, uh, things that are happening. So that's going to be a week, a week, a month after, or before. I'm getting my timeline straight. You know it. Uh, so Baldur's Gate Descent to Avernus is coming out September 17th. That is also a full adventure in one tome with an alternate cover that you can only get through game stores. There's also the standard cover that you can get everywhere else. Uh, good looking. Those are the two books right there. The standard cover is the one on the left uh, with the flying character on the front reaching for a sword, a flaming blue sword. Uh, and then the uh, alternate cover on the right, also designed by um, Mr. Hydro74 or Josh as case may be. Uh, also coming out at that time are this amazing Descent into Avernus Dice and Miscellany pack. I am so excited for this. It looked so good when I uh, opened it up at D&D Live and got to look at all of the contents. The dice themselves uh, alone are fantastic. I really love it. It's fantastic. Matches the color scheme of everything that's going on here D&D uh, wise. But that's not only it. You get two little boxes uh, that serve as amazing felt lined dice trays uh this is my motion for felt lined by the way in case you're wondering um very excited about that they feel really nice obviously not as you know uh robust as uh something made out of wood or something like that but uh, uh the cardboard is is stiff and impressive um there's also uh all of oh so that's the dice themselves with the box but then all these accoutrements come in it in that little form factor um, a lot of them are pictures and images, some of them concept art, some of them uh, encounter uh, material, things that you can use in the game itself, including, as you can see kind of in the back, that map of Avernus of what the first layer of hell looks like in Baldur's Gate Descent to Avernus. Cool stuff. Also coming out is this expansion. It is Dungeon Mayhem Battle for Baldur's Gate, also coming out on September 17th. It includes two new characters, well, three, technically, uh, Dungeon Mayhem, for those of you who don't know, is a very easy to learn, fast paced card game. Each player has a deck of cards that to make up their character. You can play them very easily. There's text on it, but you can read it all through the icon iconography, so it works really well with kids who are still learning on their language skills. And uh, it's a battle to the death. Really fun, fast-paced. A game can be over in, in five minutes, and then you want to start and play again. So there's four characters that came with the Dungeon Mayhem uh, that came out last year. This Mayhem, Mayhem expansion has got two new decks. One is Jahira, who you see on the left there. She's a shape-changing druid from the Baldur's Gate series of video games. Um, and the other you may know from that series as well is Minsk and Boo. You know, the giant 
miniature space hamster, Boo himself is coming at you. I was actually just doing some approval for some text for a Minskin Boo thing that you might be very interested in. I don't want to spoil it. I'll leave that to Nathan when he comes back and does the spoilers and swag, but uh, it's pretty exciting. So good stuff there on uh, September 17th. It will be arriving for you uh, as well. There will be uh, miniatures made by our friends at WizKids and um, gosh, so much, so much stuff. Uh, this is coming out for IDW next year. Wait, release date in winter 2019. That's not right. I think that's supposed to be winter 2020, honestly. Um, but these Infernal Tides uh, comic books take some of the characters. You can see Minsk and Boo kind of in the center there. Um, but this is written by Jim Zub with Max Dunbar as the artist um, and is recontinuing their amazing things. So that could be cool. Mm-hmm. Winter 2019. Winter 2019 already happened though, I, right? Maybe it's, you guys, you're right, you're saying it there. Yeah. I, I think it's, I, I've seen uh, some of the outlines for that series. I have not seen any of the official stuff. So we'll, as we have going on here on, on d, &D uh, News, I'll let you know as soon as you know. Uh, but speaking of Mr. Um, Jim Zub, these books are out now. I actually have them. Why am I showing up a graphic? Well, I can show you the actual book here in the flesh. Uh, you get the Explore the Magical World. Z, z, the Z is very important in that case. The Magical Worlds of Dungeons and Dragons. It is a multiverse, after all, people. Um, you can check that uh, Warriors and Weapons book out. There's also Monsters and Creatures. These uh, books are designed for younger readers, readers coming. Uh, and ooh, here's interesting. You should find out all about what's happening with Tiamat, the Queen of Evil Dragons because you might recognize her from the cover of Tyranny of Dragons, huh? Huh? Yes, uh, so this is where we get kids learning all about what's going on in the mythology of the multiverses and figuring it all out. They're amazing books. They're not short. I mean, there's definitely like a lot of content in there, uh, but it is designed for easy way to get uh, Dungeons and Dragons concepts and lore and legends and things out there into the zeitgeist, and we've heard nothing but amazingly Great feedback from folks who are finding them uh, from their kids in stores as well as uh, in libraries. I saw a lot of them today saying there is in uh, in the libraries. Uh, but nah, UK. Is she no techiesis? Question mark? Question mark? Uh, they're not the same, are they? Are they? I don't know. Um, but you know, we'll see. Tiamat, yay. She's dead. Oh no, Draco says she's dead. You killed her? All right, well, you're just going to have to figure out a way to bring her back. And that's what Rise of Team Out's all about, right? Or or not. Or you destroyed her. Who knows? It's a thing. Anywho, uh, there are amazing things also in stores now like this, Essentials Kit. Uh, it is available in Target everywhere in North America right now um, or, or in, in the U.S., however the case may be. And anywhere you can find a, a Target store that is uh, selling things. Um, we may we may be able to find it. I know there's been a lot of folks out there who have been uh, uh, to their local Target stores and had conversations with employees uh, uh, not uh, familiar with the, uh, let's say, dedication of D&D &D fandom. We know there are more copies getting out there into Target stores right now, but have no fear, on September 3rd, those Essentials kits will be available everywhere you can purchase D&D &D stuff, whether it be on uh, the content on D&D Beyond or Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds or um, purchasing the actual physical boxed product uh, in stores such as game stores or um, bookstores or anywhere else. That's all on September 3rd. I've been playing through a lot of that fun stuff and it is really great. It's really just an easy way to ramp right into a D&D adventure. Very little preamble is necessary. Obviously, you still need to make the character and uh, that can be a little bit difficult, but pre-mades exist. They're everywhere. Uh, jump into them and check them out if you can. Uh, well, a couple of housekeeping things, which I realized I skipped right over. Uh, there is no Pelham's Hot Mess tonight. Uh, Pelham caught, caught a hot mess in San Diego, uh, so he's still feeling under the weather. He's getting better and up to speed. We will hopefully continue. Uh, well, actually, no, I won't be able to be there next week. But hopefully, they will. He will continue doing Lords of Waterdeep on all of uh, the channels next week at 4 p.m. Pacific time. In the meantime, we'll play a video on demand or a vodcast, as they say in the biz, uh, at 4 p.m. tonight from our previous session. So you can check it out. 
Uh, that is that is what's going on there. Um, we'll get more on what's happening over the course of the schedule later on. We'll also have a and d Rewind. It's a little bit of a shorter one because there was a short porch over a short week uh, uh, for all that stuff at um, uh, because of everyone leaving to go to San Diego for that whole Comic-Con thing. Or Nashville, as the case may be. Uh, so yeah, we'll play the d d Rewind at, uh, at 3.30 and you can check that out and then I'll be talking at you until 4. So that will be it. I also, one of the cool things we did at um, San Diego Comic-Con was talk Rick and Morty, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, or versus, there's a new chapter in town. It's called The Painscape. Jim Zeb also did a lot of work on this. Uh, it is fantastic. And I can't wait for it to be available when you can. I don't have any news on the exact date for that. Uh, or do I? Let me find out. Dun, dun, dun. I'm doing searches. I'm doing all of the searches, so I want to make sure you can see my face. Uh, no, no, no new news on that. Uh, but the new news that I do want to new news you about uh, are, are some of these things that are in the news. Here it is in the press. Um, so here's a cool thing. Obviously IGN, uh, was talking about, uh, oh wait, that's not the right one. The different one. So yeah, we had IGN at, uh, the D and D live, uh, uh, 2019, the descent. And they talked, talked to a lot of people and went and did a huge, um, article and video. I think there's a video, uh, about what it's like and how to get into start playing Dungeons and Dragons. It's very comprehensive. It's full of affiliate links, so you know, be warned. You're definitely going to be uh, getting some stuff back to the your friends at uh, at IGN uh, for purchasing through those links. But it's a great way to get people going for um, for getting into play. That's what Dungeons and Dragons is all about: having fun with your friends and making new friends. Uh huh. That's true. I love that pull quote. That's half the reason why I wanted to put that in there was to make sure you read that pull quote. But if you ever wanted to uh, share with uh, friends of yours, fans, family, family members who've been like, I want to find out more about that D and D thing. Well, that IGN article is a perfect way to be like, here's uh, uh, you know, if you don't have the time to run it through them all themselves, you can do it uh, uh, using that. It's very, very good. Um, make it happen. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, this is a great, uh, uh, video from our friends at the AV club. They were also at D and D live 2019, the descent and a whole bunch of folks who were there, uh, talk to you, to you on the camera, uh, about what it's like to play Dungeons and Dragons and what they have gotten out of it, what kind of lessons they have learned from it. Um, and, uh, the thing that makes a great storyline is something that resonates with us on a human level. I think, uh, that was, I think German Crawford wanted to say that. It might've been Tanya to pass actually, who might've said that, uh, from the beginning, but it, the, the article about, or the video is about six minutes long and it goes through uh, a bunch of different, uh, uh, topics and, and, and points of discussion about what it's like to play Dungeons and Dragons from the people who are either making it or writing, uh, adjacent stuff or performing on live streams. Um, it's really, really worthwhile to, to check it out if you haven't already. I also wanted to highlight something like this from Gizmodo, uh, which uh, harkens back to what I was talking about with Tyranny of Dragons. It's cool to see wizards bring back the adventure that started it all. That's the first adventure that was ever written for Dungeons and Dragons. No, I mean, but it, it started the, the, the recent uh, rise of... Uh, People talking about Dungeons and Dragons in the Zeitgeist all did start with Tyranny of Dragons. So, uh, in that way, uh, they got that right. It is cool that they brought the adventure back. Uh, and uh, I like celebrating five years of the fifth edition. Not, you know, just fifth edition, but, you know, the fifth edition. Very important. Uh, it is. It did. It started on its own current trajectory. Like, like this, my hand. The trajectory of my hand continues. Excuse me. Oh, right. So, and then uh, I also wanted to uh, shout out this review uh, on Nerdist uh, for the Essentials Kit. It's a treasure for new adventurers. That friend you've always wanted to get into a game no longer has any excuses to sit down at a table with you. There are no more excuses. That's true. You can just show them that slide, show them this video and say, I know you've had a lot of excuses in the past, but now that this product is out, you, the, all of those excuses are invalid. 
I don't know if that's true necessarily, but you can try. You can try. You can certainly try. I would I would enjoy it. Um, and if you want to send them to me on uh, 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 Twitter, at Greg Tito, I, w- I will be sure to tell them all the reasons why they should get into it. No excuses. There are snacks involved. <laughs> As Lauren says, it's true. There are snacks. You got you to gotta hand it to snacks. That brings everyone together. Also Dungeons and Dragons, but mostly the snacks. Mmm. This coffee is hitting the spot. I didn't realize how much I needed it until I was like, oh, it's time to go on for D&D News. It's Tuesday afternoon. I'm in the spot. Don't believe me. Just watch. Ow, I'm drinking coffee. Mm. Uh, hello, Hanselman. Good to see you. I see that you said question, which harkens back. I, I, this is the fourth time I've said harkens back during this uh, live stream, so I apologize for that. Um, but will Tyranny of Dragons release have all the fixed addendums? Uh, I'm guessing it includes both. Yes, exactly. So we, I covered this a little bit earlier, uh, uh, Mr. Hansman. Um, and hi, good to see you. Uh, all the way from Providence, Rhode Island. It will have both of the volumes together, and it does, uh, uh, as I said, take into a lot of feedback of uh, ramp that, that first ramp of those first encounters, for sure. So... All of that is there. The other thing I want to let you make sure know about is Baldur's Gate 3. It's coming out. It's it's out already. No, it's not out already. Larian Studios is making it. They're the ones who have made uh, Divinity Original Sin. Uh, we've been working with them for a long time, developing story together uh, and framing all of what the, the, the sequel to Baldur's Gate 2, Shadows of Am, uh, will be all about. It's hard to imagine that we're going to be returning to that video game franchise uh, almost 20 years after it was released, uh, but we've got the perfect studio to be working on it, and they are, in fact, diligently working on it right now. In fact, I can't get any updates from them because they are just so busy. Um, but that's why we did this big blitz uh, around uh, E3 uh, in June, at, right after we announced uh, Baldur's Gate Descent into Invernus, and then going and uh, speaking to all of those uh, video game press, and people are super excited about it. Um, but that was part of, the, part of the plan, was to make sure we had all of this uh, buzz and information about what is going on with the game, and then that would give the developers time to make the game, or at least you know, continue making the game, getting it up to a speed where uh, we could start people playing with it. It is looking pretty awesome. The trailer is indeed pretty cool looking, uh, TK, as you say. It was one of my favorite games. In fact, it was uh, probably the thing that got, I mean, a lot of people have said this, but you know, I had a fascination with D&D when I was a kid, kind of went out, uh, uh, you know, I did theater, did some other, you know, things uh, uh, around the high school time, and then it uh, brought me back. It definitely brought me back uh, in, in college playing uh, Baldur's Gate. Oh, man, it's so good. So I'm, I think it's going to do that same thing for uh, for for a lot of other um, uh, digital RPG fans out there, bring them back into, into playing a real game like Dungeons and Dragons. One other fun thing that we... Oh, I, there's another question. I, I feel like I have to answer when you put question in the front, right? Uh, we want to bring, make any of the classes from older editions, such as the Dragon Shaman or Shaman from 3rd edition PHB2. I'm going to say no. No plans. But that doesn't mean it isn't happening. But the, I, one thing you can do, and I'll get into this, uh, is you should design your own dragon shaman, perhaps based based off of third edition. If one is not already published on the Dungeon Masters Guild itself, I'll get to you talking about what the Dungeon Masters Guild is in a little bit. But I bet there is going to be um, some uh, some folks who are just as interested in all the classes that came out for the three E Splat books, including the dragon shaman. Uh, yes, I did have really long hair, uh, Hanselman. That is correct. Uh, in in high school, I don't know if there was ever a picture of it, but I should I should get together my uh, picture from I believe it was my junior year's yearbook, and I am raising the horns like this. I just we watched a lot of Days and Confused when I was a kid, uh, and so I was doing that, tongue out the hat backwards, but it wasn't a cap. 
it was not a trucker hat for sure. Uh, it was a, um, I don't even know what the name of it, those those caps that are like the British, you know, Peaky Blinders type, type caps. I had one of those turned backwards like the guy from Days and Confused uh, and put it up. And I do remember my English AP teacher, um, for some reason, the, my pictures that year were delivered to it. He like took all the pictures out of the envelope and just put them everywhere. And I was like, "This is what you're not supposed to do at your uh, for your for your school picture." But that picture is actually in the yearbook. Uh, and I, one day, I feel like I got I got to put it out there so that everyone knows all about it. Pub cap, flat cap. Those are the good things. Uh... <laughs> I don't. Why am I answering questions? I don't know. It's the, the news that people want to hear about. Yes, you are right. Uh, Destroy Mayhem. Destro or just Destro? Are you are you the Destro from G.I. Joe? How are you? I had no idea that you were uh, uh, on Twitch. It's good to know. Anyhow, I think we should get ready to watch this week's D&D Rewind. What do you guys think? Are you excited? Are you, are you pumped to see what's been happening? Uh, on this here D and D channel for the last week, it's a little bit of a shorter one I've heard. Um, again, because there were so many folks who were not uh, live just because they were traveling to uh, Dungeons and Dragons and all that fun stuff. Uh, but before we get to the rewind, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to play the D and D live uh, sizzle reel because it is amazing, and I we have not yet uploaded it up to the YouTube's. Uh, but I, you are getting this the second sneak peek at. The D and D live sizzle reel, and then we'll go right into the rewind right after that. Let's make it happen. All right, ready? One, two, three. Hey everyone, welcome to the descent. This is a yearly event where we come together and we stream Dungeons and Dragons and we play Dungeons and Dragons. And we learn about new amazing things that are coming out. The main thing that's kind of kicked everything off, which is the announcement of Baldur's Gate: Descent into Avernus, mm -hmm. brand new adventure. It is D and D meets Mad Max: Fury Road. It starts in the city of Baldur's Gate, and from there, you are drawn down into the depths of hell. We have been having live games on the main stage themed around Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. No, Gary didn't want me to hit that one. This is the Gary Gygax die. I just rolled in that one, so uh, <laughs> do as you will. You go try to go shatter, and you, you guys can hear it, but it's on the other side of this whoosh noise that is happening. And you see him kind of shake his head and shake it off. He keeps kind of moving his gaze from one of you to the next. She betrayed everything that we were, and now we're doomed to be here forever. In the arms <laughs> Crit. Oh. Girl. Oh my God. <laughs> so much work has gone into the set building. Roll20 have this amazing map of like Avernus. A whole ton of different vendors all around here. You can actually meet the people who run these companies. There's an army of people cosplaying <laughs> to kind of immerse you in feeling like you're in Baldur's Gate. It's a way to kind of immerse yourself in the new adventure, even if you've never played D&D before, mm -hmm. or even if you are a very advanced player. The really special thing about this is how welcoming mm. all of our yeah. extended family is. Dungeons and Dragons is about spending time with the people you like and meeting new people who are passionate about making stories together. It's been a real pleasure to celebrate the hobby that we all love in an environment where we can all encourage each other. There's never been a better time to start playing D&D. &D. Now mm -hmm. is the moment. Welcome to the community. Everyone hates chairs. Chairs need to be destroyed. You need to roll uh, a 20 on your attack roll and kill all chairs. Uh, one thing I've been trying to describe in my D&D sessions has been things that, like, you know what they are, but you don't use the word for them, so you try to describe uh, sometimes more modern things. And that's where the whole, and as I was doing it, I was like, oh, that's where the gazebo problem, when, when famously... Uh, I don't know if this is apocryphal or not, but that Gary Gygax was describing uh, a gazebo to his players and they thought it was something that they had to attack and they killed it and it was a drag gazebo, all that stuff. But yeah, I've had uh, versions of like that happen. So when you try to describe what a chair is to someone, you can say it's a chair, but no, it's got these four legs that go down and they have a back and it's rearing up at you and it's a mimic and it's trying to kill you. I don't know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Uh, but I like that uh, d d Live has had so many casualties amongst... Um, Furniture, 
Yes, that's one thing we're very proud of. Speaking of other things we're proud of, here is all of the fun stuff that happened uh, on the D&D channel last week for D&D Rewind. Do I want to make this this turn? Because I can do a really cool thing, but also like we need the resources really badly. We'll we'll sleep in the dead grit nest probably. We'll probably have to. <laughs> mm, great. Yeah, yes. that's not a bad spot for us to sleep. All right, got a very narrow I entrance. Step, I am gonna step way back here and be like, Jewel, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And then I'm gonna turn you into a giant scorpion. <laughs> I walk up to this big mound of hair and I'll go, hold still! Ah, I grab hey. him by what his, you want me to hold? Uh, I grab him by his bangs and his eyebrow hair and I just go, <laughs> and I cut it so that he can actually see. <laughs> Next time, number! I'm on a bloody <laughs> ship! <laughs> and she notices things that are would you think when you were going through things put things back uh <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to say no no i mean i i, I know I, i'm honestly trying to think uh, i don't i think we would try to yeah i don't know how successful it would be but i think okay. we would try to i'm gonna have her can roll. we roll to see if we did it successfully yeah i'm gonna roll a perception yeah. for her oh yeah she thinks it's fine the arch devil then they may take them to one of their levels <laughs> So there is no way I could find this out. I did not say that. I said that I do not know currently. If we <laughs> get were to the find the legends... Just leave. Get just go the under the table. No, it's okay. Carry on. I'll come under no, control. No, because she's right now. So am I. Why did I even? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Hang on. You tell me. Oh, God. Absolutely. Continuity, Greg. We're retconning this, guys. Sorry. If you win, though, your victory will be colored by will this. Be, it, will be, it will be tainted. It's an asterisk. Yes. Yeah. All right, I've got taint. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bribed the shipwright. Oh, I very much enjoy uh, making people snarf a little bit and have the taint come out of their nose. And it, it's very fun, and uh, I'm sad that we're not going to have a continuation of what's been happening in Lords of Waterdeep uh, this afternoon, but if you're interested in watching that entire episode of us playing Lords of Waterdeep, it will be on video on demand right after this here D&D news, so you get to watch it in all of its glory and see who reigns supreme. I will give you a little bit of a hint. It wasn't me. It was not me. In fact, I did probably the worst game of Lords of Waterdeep I've ever had. In that thing, so you can just see me and all of my bravado fall down and be destroyed. Um, by but I won't reveal who the winner was, so you got to watch it to figure it out. Alrighty, so there are a lot of other fun things I want to talk about uh, here on the D and D news, and the first one is Adventurers League. It is the D and D officials play campaign. Uh, I like that the D and D officials. Uh, uh, you can create a character in Adventures League and take that anywhere Adventures League uh, uh, games are being played. It's all set up by tiers. It's very easy to jump in and try to find a game. Uh, that's the goal with it. And you can play it at conventions, charity events, local game stores, wherever you can. Um, and we have been trying to highlight some amazing, fun folks happening um, from different parts doing Adventures League events. And uh, these photos come from Morristown, New Jersey, where Dexcon. 22 hosted more than 65 tables of Adventurers League play over the 4th of July weekend. Whoa. Players and DMs participated in Last Orders at the Yawning Portal, a Season 8 epic, uh, as well as the 2018 Open, where DMs were encouraged to dress up in character. I see some in character. Oh, there we go. There are the ones. They are definitely in character there at DexCon. That's so fun. Uh, that's awesome. Cool. Well, that is uh, uh, amazing. If you want to shout out your Adventurers League game, uh, you can do that pretty easily. And I will talk about it here on D&D News. Send an email to community at 
at dndadventurersleague.org. Send some group shots, little snippets of uh, any information that you might want to share, anecdotes, and I will read it here on there. So we've been having, uh, we had like a huge amount of uh, photos at one point and we ran through all of them. We definitely want some more submissions. So for all of you who are playing Adventurers League this summer, snap some shots, let people know about it. It can be a officially you know, run event at a, at a game store looking like these. Uh, or it can be, or at a convention, uh, or it can be in your home game at an interesting place. I want to see Dungeons and Dragons being played in strange places. I've said this before, I'm, you know, uh, but I, I find that really fascinating, uh, and uh, would love to do it. I, maybe it'll be fodder for my Air D and D show that I want to run. Make it happen if you can. Um, so that's all stuff about uh, uh, Adventurers League. Um, and I want to talk to you about the, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to, well, I'm going to talk to you about the Dungeon Masters Guild while I'm also, uh, making sure I said everything I needed to say about Adventures League, because I feel like I actually lost, um, some of the, uh, important things. One sec. Uh, I can't do two things at once. I was going to search for something while also, um, doing other things. Uh, and I, 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 I can't do that. I really can't. I've tried. Uh, right. That's what I want to talk about. Yeah, so Adventures League is ready to see you in hell. Michigan. The D&D Adventures League is celebrating the release of Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus with Vote Pit Yap. Pit Yap. That's P I P E A I P. Uh, that is a, uh, a hashtag around Pip Yap, a mischievous imp present throughout the Adventures League storylines. Uh, and they are running for mayor of a little town called Hell in Michigan. Uh, it's a pretty cool event. Um, you'll be, uh, if you get a badge and go to the event, uh, you will be able to play um, the 2019 D&D Open Forged in Fire, uh, the one that was played at uh, uh, D&D Live. The first season nine epic Infernal Pursuits, as well as tons of adventure, uh, Adventures League uh, swag and season nine adventures uh, for the first time. Go check it out, it's a really cool looking event. Um, we are working with the Avengers League on making it happen. And speaking of Season 9, uh, Mr. Chris Lindsay and the team running Adventures League, all the admins, they are shaping the rule set for the upcoming season right now. So make sure if you have in, uh, uh, opinions or you want to have your voice be heard, go to dndadventurersleague.org and take the survey. It closes on August 9th, so you got like two weeks uh, left to do it. Um, but that, at that point, it'll be closed down. And you'll wrangle all the data and share the insights and uh, with all everything with the community. So uh, go to the link for there. Um, uh, thank you, DC, for dropping it right there in the chat. It's going to be awesome. Uh, if you are able to travel to Hell, Michigan, uh, I, I, I highly suggest it. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun, and the people who have been putting this on are super excited and uh, inspired. So. Uh, you know, we, we had D&D Live in L.A. and in Hell, Michigan. And I feel like there's there's a, a convergence there between those two events. Make it make it so. Uh, all right. I already talked about all the photos. You guys can do that. I'm glad I looked that up because I would have missed that and I skewed it up. Uh, so Dungeon Masters Guild is very fun. It is a, a uh, website. It's called DungeonMastersGuild.com. And that is where, and we were already talking about it a little bit, but I want to make sure you know, that's where you can publish all types of D&D content. Uh, using the uh, IP of the Forgotten Realms, Ravnica, Ravenloft, uh, as well as some other Wizards, Settings, Heroes, and more. Lots of stuff is up there. Um, the DMs Guild Christmas in July sale is on right now. It is Christmas in July on the DMs Guild. Thousands of digital titles across Dungeon Masters Guild are 25% off for a limited time. And that's just July. The limited time is in July. Uh, and one of the coolest things out there, they're continuing to create awesome supplements, getting you ready to get into hell, as you know, as you're wont to do. Uh, this one is called Devil's Advocate. It's a guide to infernal contracts by Justice Armand. It's a PDF that's all about creating, role playing, and extending infernal contracts. It includes sections on the five essential components of a contract: consideration, the offer, the obligation fine print, and acceptance. Uh, it feels like those are like the five stages of, of grief a little bit, but all right, well, you know, we're, maybe maybe they're, they're analogous. Um, and three new monsters, uh, collection agents. Hmm, that means the, the devilish collection agents? I like that, I like that, that's pretty cool. Check out Devil's Advocate if you can. It's a really good looking cover. 
Uh, I don't, I'm not sure who did the cover, but it is amazing. So uh, I like it. Sign it up. Uh, all right. That is everything happening with uh, Adventurers League and Dungeon Masters Guild. I've got two things that I want to talk to you that are a little bit off the beaten path. Uh, we're starting up Extra Life right now, or actually last weekend. Um, Extra Life is a fantastic uh, initiative that we've been doing. This is the seventh year that Dungeons & Dragons has, has been taking part, uh, and it is uh, a charity that supports Children's Miracle Network Hospitals all across the world. And the game day for this, and usually Extra Life, uh, it, you know, was usually very video game focused uh, in its messaging in the past. People would play video games and uh, on streams or otherwise and ask for their fans or people watching to donate them to do silly things or just call them out on stream. We have totally um, uh, subverted its, its goal of being all about video games and started making about tabletop. Uh, seven years ago, uh, you know, some background history on this, Greg Bilsland, who used to be working in the D&D marketing team, uh, took it upon himself. He thought it was this really great idea, and uh, it is a fantastic idea. Lots of game playing for charity. There's lots of ways to play Dungeons & Dragons. You can join the D&D team. Uh, you should, uh, if you are interested in supporting and, and helping out the kids. Um, we have lots of our uh, pages up and running. I actually just signed up for my page for this year right now, and I need to get it going, so thank you for that reminder. I am a terrible garbage person, and I need to get on that uh, to raise more money for people. Um, so you, there's lots of interesting, funny ways to uh, get some D&D interaction with some of D&D luminaries out there. There's uh, Adventurers League certificates that usually are for... Um, cosmetic things, not you know, nothing mechanical or game breaking in any way. Um, but if you donate money, you might be able to get like a funny looking pet or an interesting um, uh, accoutrement that does something fun and interesting in role playing ways. Uh, there's also just lots of swag. You can check out not this shirt, but a shirt uh, that's designed by none other than the amazing graphic designer, Emmy Tanji. She does amazing work. Pretty much everything that you see that's not designed by Hydro 74 uh, that's D&D related is or has been touched by Emmy. Uh, she has done all of the t-shirts that we've done for Extra Life in the past. And these designs are some of the best that I've seen. Uh, check them out on um, Custom Ink. Uh, there are uh, two figures on this specific uh, shirt. One is Lulu, who is a Hollyphant. Uh, who will figure prominently in the adventure Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus, and Jezebel, a closet. Um, and there will be more and more designs for more t-shirts coming out over the course of the entire, uh, you know, uh, season leading up to when the Extra Life Game Day and beyond, because uh, it's an annual fundraiser. Um, check it out. If you want to donate, you can do that. Uh, if you want to uh, join the the D and D group and start uh, you know uh, rallying behind your community to donate towards you all funneling up towards the amount that we'll be giving to uh, Dungeons and Dragons team make it so it's super fun watch all the games as you can we'll be doing a lot of them over the course of uh, the next few months but definitely next weekend uh, for the Founders and Legends event um, down in L A. Uh, Luke Gygax and many of his cohorts will be playing uh, Dungeons & Dragons, some 5th edition, some older editions, um, and uh, raising money for Extra Life doing it. So jump in, make it happen. Those should be tons of fun, and we'll be banging this drum for the next few months, uh, getting things more exciting. We'll be releasing more and more fun things. In fact, Chris Lindsay, admin of uh, the Dungeon Masters Guild, as well as a Fine Dungeon Master in his own right um, has got something really exciting that he is going to announce at during Founders and Legends this weekend. Uh, so make sure you check it out. That's all happening on Saturday, July 27th. So a couple of days away. All starting at 12 noon Pacific time. It'll be broadcast live from twitch.tv slash GaryCon, uh, the GaryCon channel, but we'll be hosting it here on the D&D Twitch channel. So tune in and see some amazing people and uh, you'll get to see what he's making and how he's going to be putting it up on the Dungeon Masters Guild um, for for uh, the kids. It's all for the kids. And I can't wait to sign up uh, and get going. Uh, the other thing that's really fascinating is, of course... Uh, Gen Con is a is a event that's happening very soon. In fact, I'm checking to make sure I know when it is. Uh, August first, August first is when it's happening. Um, 
And uh, I have a friend, uh, his name is Brian Cortijo. Uh, we have been uh, gaming buddies and uh, making stuff together for a long time. And uh, he is a big part of the Forgotten Realms lore and, um, I don't know, uh, community, I guess, just around what is going on with the, the Forgotten Realms. Uh, Whelms. The Forgotten Whelms. Uh, I've got a lot of whelms. I feel overwhelmed uh, by what I've forgotten over the time. Uh, but they do this event every year at Gen Con. It's called Candle Keep Presents. Uh, this year it's uh, Saturday at 8 p.m. And they just get together and they have themes about each one of these events, these annual events. This theme is Leaves of the World Tree, which discusses the planes and how the influence matters in the realms, which is pretty fascinating. Uh, I like all that. Uh, there is some really cool stuff that will be given away at the event. Uh, there are tickets available. You still need to get, uh, they're, they're free tickets. You can't, you, you don't have to purchase them, but you do, it's a ticketed event uh, at Gen Con. So check it out if you're interested. You will find a lot about what's happening for Dungeons and, uh, for, for the Forgotten Realms as a, as a whole uh, beyond what we just uh, put out in our adventure books and stuff at an event like that. So check it out if you can. Uh, I hope you will. I'll be shouting it out uh, as much as I can leading up to... Uh, actually, you know what? I won't because I'm going to be uh, away next week. So this is it. This is it. All, I get to shout it out all right here. That's it. Uh, but I'm really excited about it. And uh, Brian uh, works a lot uh, with the community. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Check it. Uh, definitely a, a long event, uh, so feel free to pop in, check out what's happening, maybe uh, work in with some of the giveaways uh, and and get involved there. But if you need to head off to another event, that's that's totally okay as well. Um, the Unearthed Arcana has been out for a while uh, with the Artificer. Uh, if you haven't been had a chance to download that, you totally can. Uh, there is uh, a survey available for you to give your um, feedback on how you think it w uh, is turning out. Uh, we've got some news about what the Artificer is uh, coming up soon, but uh, I can't mum's the word on it right now. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Dragon Plus issue 26 has been out for a little while, but you should check it out. It's got a nice <laughs> uh, uh, letter to the editor from me um, uh, talking about what it was like putting on D&D &D Live and all that fun stuff, as well as uh, some great interviews with uh, Jennifer Kretschmer and TJ Storm all about their uh, project Monsters and Fables. Uh, not to mention an interview with Jim Zub and uh, all about these uh, amazing Young Adventurers guides uh, and what they what they might mean. There's also tons of uh, uh, digital maps and images and stuff that you can get only from uh, the Dragon Plus. You can get it on your phone. You can get it uh, for iOS or Android devices, obviously, and we'll, you can download each issue that comes out every two months. But you can also get all that content at dragonmag.com, uh, which is going to be fantastic. So do it. Do it up while you can. All right. I uh, am very excited uh, for everything that's been going on. I'm going to run through a little bit more of the schedule for this week so you guys know what's happening. Of course, no hot mess tonight uh, or not new one. We'll be playing the video on demand from last week. Um, tomorrow, we've got Roll20 Presents, Jace Balaran Must Die. That's the amazing Dungeon Master Adam Koval uh, with um, players Carlos Luna, TK Johnson, Masood Hook, Huck, and Katie May. Uh, then we have Dragon Plus tomorrow. I'm not sure who his guest is, but I'm going to hope it's Jeremy Crawford because he always does good things there. We're hosting uh, Heroes of the Veil at 2 p.m. Pacific time. And then it's time to also host Acquisitions Incorporated, the C-Team, uh, at Penny Arcade uh, at 4 p.m. On Thursday, we've got 9 a.m. There is D&D Beyond uh, Dev Hosting. That's a Dev Update. That's where we'll be hosting it. That's Adam Bradford putting together all the fun stuff that's going on with D&D Beyond, answering your questions, and letting you know what's coming down the pipe. Uh, that's at 9 a.m. on Thursday. 1 p.m., uh, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms will be playing stuff. Welch's Game Juice will be returning uh, with um, the chance to win a Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition. Uh, she's working her way through and doing really well. You get two, potentially, two codes available each uh, week if you watch. Uh, and then we're hosting Critical Role, which should be fantastic. Then on Friday, Adventurers Wanted is with Lisa Penrose and Alan Patrick, two of the amazing admins behind uh, everything that's going on with the Adventurers League. In fact, uh, Lisa is the person who updates me with all that news that I that I uh, give you. Uh, so hi, Lisa. How's it going? Um, she is going to talk to Alan uh, at 10 a.m. on Friday. 
uh, all about what's happening with Adventures League. So tune in there. Then we've got a longer session of Dragon Talk from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. talking to some amazing people, including Nina and Selena, two artists working on Dwarven Forge. They've got a great uh, scenery that's going on Kickstarter right now. We'll be talking to them. And as well, I've got someone else that I want to make sure I know is... Um, uh, getting a shout out because they were being nice and tweeting about such things. Yes, Morgan Peter Brown uh, will be there. He is doing stuff for caffeine and it is looking really amazing. Uh, so that's Friday, uh, 11 to 3. Me and Shelly will be back. I'm going to tell her all about all the bachelorette parties I went to in Nashville. They were fantastic. Really, really good. Uh, all right, everybody. I am going to sign off. This has been awesome. I love D&D news. Again, I won't be back next week, but I will be there the following week. Uh, but I'll see you on Friday for Dragon Talk. All right. Bye, everybody. I need to...